Maybe. year when yeah. I've got access to the wars, mm -hmm. I still learn first from Twitter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's changed, hasn't it? I yeah. mean, it used to be that we had this kind of, we thought we lived in this sacred world of the wires, you know, in a newsroom and nobody else had access to them and they were like a mystery, the wires, and all the information that came on them from the professional agencies. That's totally changed. I mean, people now get stuff on Twitter far, far quicker, which means you have to be sharper off out of the blocks as well as a professional journalist mm -hmm. because everyone is out of the blocks yeah. quick, you know. But I think I think as well there's, a, there's a, a, an element of the media lost credibility to, with, with the public the last decade, not only here in the UK, but in America as well. So I think newsrooms and um, news desks are becoming more uh, transparent, if you say, and they, they are like more open to, to, to tell how they are working, what, where the, their content are uh, yeah. coming from, yeah. than it was like maybe 20 years ago or 25 years ago. I think that's true, Sandy, don't you? We source, we, we now, we, we are getting better at linking and sourcing yes. and providing yes, kind of right. like, you know, this is where this came from, this is who tweeted this, this is who said that, don't you think, than we yes. used to be, which yes, is good. Yes, we are, we're far better at that. But the other thing, of course, is we, we traditional newsrooms in the past treated its, the audience as a homogenous group who, who all wanted much the same thing. These are the top three stories. What, what all traditional media outlets have been quite slow at doing is recognising that's not really the case. A lot of the grief we get are people say, why are you not covering this demonstration about it? whatever it is? You know, we kind of think it may be something that's not interesting, but if you're interested, that's the news you want to hear about. But what social media allows people to do is follow people who will tell them about that. Mm -hmm. And so for them, if you're interested in human rights, mm -hmm demonstrations and activism and so on, you're not going to get it from the BBC as well as you can get it by tailoring your social media use. And so I, I think what's going to happen is people will be able to tailor their news experience uh, precisely to their interests. The danger of that, of course, is you're in a bubble and you're getting the information that you want to get and then something that doesn't fit that mould you suddenly go, why did nobody tell me that there was 10,000 people out of work? Nobody I follow said anything yeah. about it. You know, it's, it's, the danger is, by depending on whether you call it citizen journalism or the use of social media by people who are attempting to give the news, the danger is that it's self-selecting, it's self-reinforcing, and what you have become interested in is all you get. Uh, the great strength that traditional newsrooms still have is they'll give you something that you wouldn't have chosen to ask for information about. You brought a little bit, but it's interesting because I, I, uh, it's, you know, when the the, the protest, the war in Syria happened, you know, most of the most of the the, the content generated by the media there was was filtered by the government. So people that were outside, they didn't know. They, people start to be more aware of things that were happening there through sitting journalists. Yeah, I think no there doubt. were some bloggers yeah. and some some video it, well, videos that it's a totally different thing. Isn't it? It's even far far more important, crucial even in a society that doesn't have a free media such mm -hmm. as ours. Then it becomes then it, the citizen journalism becomes an imperative rather than <coughs> a luxury. You know, doesn't it? It's just, it's, yeah, it's interesting as well because uh, I I have I read some reports that I I know that more like um, old journalists from you know, older journalists or they've been in the in the in the profession for a long time they are more like sandy <laughs> maybe <Yeah. laughs> no, I mean, I, he doesn't seem to be but you know <laughs> they are more uh, you know restricted against uh, sitting journalists they are not really they don't accept, they think that they don't have the same skill set that, yeah. that, that I, and, I think that's know, beginning to melt away though uh, yeah and I, I I think in a sense we're in a market and it doesn't matter whether you like the skills that someone brings to it. If people trust them to give them information, you've lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, look at so. look at Wings Over Scotland. Do you know? Yeah. You know the the political pro independence yeah. site based mm -hmm. in Bath. Um, but you know, whatever you think of Wings, he's providing 
a very interesting yeah. service. And I bet and, you and, follow it. And I, I follow, follow it, and Sandy you follows know, most it, and most journalists follow, follow it, and he comes up with some really interesting some stuff. some of the stuff he throws up is interesting. And more interesting than that, more pertinent to what we're talking about than what, what, what you think of, of the content of Wings, mm-hmm. he's getting paid. Yeah, he's, 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 he's getting found paid. a way of he's getting found paid. a funding stream he's paying himself yeah. people are contributing people who believe in who are of a like mind to him and, and believe in what he's doing and think that the mainstream media is totally biased against the independence movement if not corrupt not a view that I subscribe to obviously mm. um, certainly not from the BBC's perspective <laughs> but nonetheless a lot of people are flocking to him so as Sandy says who's the loser is there? who's losing Who's losing then? Who, who's lost that battle? Is it the, have the, are the, mainstream, the mainstream media are clearly have questions to answer at the very least as to why people are, are deserting them for a, for a, a specialist piece of content. As, as you say, the danger of that is that people's minds are narrowed if they only live in an echo chamber and it only reinforces their own prejudices and, and, and established kind of opinions of the world, views of the world. That is the danger. That you, you, it doesn't, the beauty of the mass media is that it can at its best, broaden people's minds and, and, and provide you, as you say on page 7 in the top, the bottom left hand, go, oh that's a story, I would never have read that, I would never have searched for that, I would never have put that in as a search term, that's an amazing little interesting fact I didn't know about and that happens when you watch the news at night on the telly or when you listen to the radio or when you pick up a newspaper, in a way it doesn't if you only follow Joe Bloggs who only tweets about the subject you're interested in from the prejudice that you already have You, know? you can simulate that I mean, I make a really conscious effort to follow people uh, who write opinionated stuff yeah. that I strongly disagree yeah, yeah, with. Yeah, mm-hmm. too. You know, because I, I, I think that's really good and challenging. But how many people are going to do that? You know, the first time someone writes something they disagree with, unfollow. And, yeah. and I, for me, I, I think, oh, right, I don't agree with that, but I'd never thought of that. Yeah. So that's a good thing. But, for me. but then that's interesting because that gets to the heart of probably the difference between the instinct of a professional journalist mm. and the instinct of a citizen journalist. Not always, but often. And, and the instinct of the professional journalist is, wow, that's a different take. That's an interesting way of looking at it. That's controversial. That's maybe fundamentally outside my worldview. I like that. Whereas the instinct of a lot of citizen journalists might be, all the same things. I don't like that. You know, mm-hmm. the, you, you reach the, you, you just, go, you try to shut down things you disagree with. That's maybe unfair. I mean, I, I, we're talking in really broad terms, so I'm mm-hmm. aware that sure, generalising sure. is dangerous. But I, I think professional journalism at its best it, it is people who are naturally want to encourage a vast, a greater variety of opinion. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's, um, but, but. Yeah, but then you know, a sitting journalist, he's he, 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 she, it's more, it's freer to to, because they are not attached to a media, to a media outlet, to a to a company, so they are freer to express their opinion. Yeah, yeah. more than a. Yes, than, but, than, then, than, but then, but but then you but get into exactly, but opinion or fact, exactly, and yeah. what what we. I mean, this is the difference between the BBC and the newspaper, isn't it? Really, there's less pressure. We, you know we, what I mean? we don't tend to deal in opinion. Except, except in the sense it's all the second half. You yeah. know, we've got lots of opinions on on our website and radio yeah. television, yeah. but it's the facts are first. X has said, yeah. mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. so you would never, unless somebody screwed up, you would never see in the BBC piece on the website uh, an assessment of something, an opinion which wasn't attributed to somebody else. Uh, up to a point. I mean, up to a point. Our expert correspondents and editors, to a certain extent, give a bit mm-hmm. of expert 